Okay, the topic for today is compare linear and non-linear equations. In the page 172, example one, we need to compare two linear functions. The first step we need to do is to see, okay, the diagram we have at the right part of the page. You have one table and you have one graph. This is what we need to compare. But we are, we are going to read the example so we understand what is the idea of this? An auto assembly factory needs to purchase new welding robots. The factory manager has information on two different models of welding robots. The welding rates for each model are shown below. How do the welding rates for the two robots compare? Okay, you have two models. The first one is G and X 007, and in the other one is the model T 1000. We are going to compare these two models. The first one uh, represent the constant rate of change using the table, and in the other one we are going to obtain the rate of change using the graph. So the first step we need to do is to write the values we have in the table. D time is going to represent my variable x and for the number of welding tasks I'm going to relate this with the variable y. This is the number of welding. I'm going to write welding tasks below because I in the right part I'm going to write the variable. So this is the welding tasks and in here inside the parentheses I'm going to write the y. And what we have for the first values, two, five, seven, 12. And at the right part, I'm going to write for the number of welding 20.8. This is the first value we have. The other one is related with 52. Third, the third one is um, 72.8, 2.8 and the last one is going to be 124.8 okay this is what we have on the table I'm going to complete this so you can see it better okay then I need to draw the graph I'm going to draw the graph in the other part of the board because they are the two uh, things we need to compare. This is for the model T1000. And now I'm going to draw the graph for the model GNX007. If I start in here, I have this. And for the right part of the X, I have something like this. Now I'm going to write the values using the text. I'm going to write the values we have for X. We start with one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to give more space in here. Okay, we have something like this. I'm going to move it so you can place the zero at the origin. Remember, we need to place the zero at the origin of the graph. The zero is for the X and for the Y. And now I'm going to write the vertical numbers, starting with 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and I finish with the 10. Okay, the space is not going to be enough. You can see it clearly. But we only need on to the number 40. So I'm going to place this in here. OK, this is what we have. And we only need on to the number 40. So it's not a problem. The graph starts in the origin. You can see that it starts in the point 0, 0. So I'm going to start in here, this part of the graph. And we are going to place the points you need. For the first one, you have 1. And you can see that it's not completely 10. If you see, and you have a grid, 
okay? You can see it on the grid of your book. He is not completely 10, he's more than 10, he's 11.2. You have it on the vertical line, 11.2. You can see the small numbers you have. Okay, and later we need to place the points then. For the number one is going to be located in here. Two is with 20, I think. Three is with 30. And the number four is with the 40. I'm going to move the numbers because I need to have the, the, the points. I'm going to select this and I'm going to move it because I want to have the points. Okay, I'm going to move this one first for the zero and later I'm going to move the other numbers. Um, if I cannot move it, okay. I'm going, I want to move it so you can see it in here, okay? Where is the point located? And later I need to move back this in here. Now you can see it better, right? You can see the points where they are located. And now what is the important part in here, guys? We need to find the constant rate of change in this one and the constant rate of change in this other one to compare, okay, to compare the values. How I'm going to obtain the constant rate of change? What is the rate of change? Is the slope. We are talking about the slope of this two things, the slope for this table and for the graph. Remember, you are going to obtain a different slope because they are different robots. But we are, uh, we are proving in this exercise that we can find the slope again, 1000 times I told you the same. We can find the slope using the table or we can use um, the graph to find the slope. So in this case, the formula for the slope, you have y divided by the value of x. Yes, so we take the values. For example, I, I'm going to take the first two values. We don't need to, to use the other, one, the other one values, okay? We can take any values, okay? You only take two. It could be the values you want, but I'm going to take the first two values. And for the m, it's going to be a subtraction of the values of y. 52 minus 20.8. This is going to be divided by the values of x, 5 minus 2. So what do we have in here? 52 minus 20.8 is going to be 31.2 divided by 3. And finally, the slope is going to be 10.4. 10 this is the slope. This is what we were looking for, okay? The constant and the rate of change, okay? The value for the slope. And in this one, how are you going to obtain the slope? You can see that for each value of x, you move 11.2 in y. So what is going to be the value of y? Remember what I told you when you have one, for the value of x, the slope is going to be the value of y. So in here, what we have is this. m is going to be equal y divided by x. And you have that y is 11.2. And you divide this by the value of x. x is 1 because you move 1 in each part. You can see you move 1. So the constant rate of change you have in here is 11.2. The constant rate of change, we already have it. So which one is going to be better, okay? The greater the slope of change is going to be better for the, the question they are asking you. They want to know which robot, okay, to choose which one of these. So we compare the rate of change in, in this case, for example, you can read in the part we have below, in this step two, 
now that we find the initial value for each robot, uh, what is going to be the initial value? Before we go to the slope, I'm going to talk to you about this. The initial value is zero, right? We start in zero because in zero minutes, the time zero minutes, zero hours, the robot is not going to do any task, okay? If it's turned off, for example, it's not going to do any tasks. In this case, it's the same, right? Okay, it's another robot I'm talking about. So at zero minutes, each robot performs zero tasks. The initial value is zero, okay? There is no y-intercept. Starting zero because it starts in the origin. Zero for x and zero for y. Zero minutes, zero task. And the data, and the data for the model g, x, and o, o, 7 has a greater constant. This is this one. Has a greater constant of change, rate of change. So it can complete more welding tasks per minute. So if you want to buy between these two robots, you need to choose these two, the number two, because the rate of change is better. Okay. Now, if you have finished with this, we can go to the example two in the next page. The example two is located on the page 173. Page 173. I'm going to create a new one. And what we have in here, something similar. We need to compare between a table and a graph. But in this case, the graph is not a straight line. The graph is represented by a curve. Compare linear and no linear functions. Okay, linear is when we have a straight line. No linear functions is when we have right in here the curve. So I'm going to write again the facts with you. The side length, this is the value for x side length. I'm going to write the variable x in here and the perimeter is going to be y, sorry. The perimeter is going to be the value of the variable y. So you can see that this increase constantly, zero, one, two, three, four. It increased one by one. You have a constant rate in here. You have a constant increase. Now for the perimeter is the same, only that we don't increase one by one, we increase we increase four by four. We count by four. Zero, four, eight, 12. And in the last one, we finish with 16. This is the last one we have. So I'm going to finish the table with you so we can draw the graph. And when we have the graph and the table, we can compare the two. The two relations, because we don't, uh, we don't know yet if they are functions, okay? We are going to compare the relations. We know for sure that they are relations, but we don't know if they are functions. In this case, you can see that it's a function. The first one is a function because you have a constant increase of the values is going to be a linear function. 0, 4, 8, 12 is going to be a linear function. So for the second one, I'm going to draw in here. I start and I'm going to move this part for Y. In this case, we don't need to write all the numbers. I don't need to show you all the numbers. The important part I need to show you is the form of the graph. So I'm going to draw in here, but the form of the graph, I hope that you can see it. It's something like this. And we have something in here. It's not a line, it's not a straight line, it's a curve. So for the, maybe I can write in here. This is for the side length. And the other one is for the area. Air. 
Yeah, I'm going to write vertical in vertically. And why we have the site length in the area? Because we are working with one figure that you all know. This is a square. Okay. This is the kind of graph you are going to have when you have a square. And I'm going to show you why. Remember, if the side length, for example, is S, S, S in here too, how you represent, this is the side length, right? This is S. How you represent the area? Okay, we already copied in the last class, but I'm going to write it again. It's going to be the side length to the power of two. So when you have something to the power of two, this is the kind of graph you are going to have. It's going to be a curve, okay? So this relation is a function. You can see that is a function. Again, like we were doing on Friday, you can see that for each value of x, for example, in this value of x, I don't know, it could be two, three, you are going to have a value of y. So you are relating only one value of x with one value of y. So this is going to be a function too. I'm going to erase this so you don't get confused because it's not on the, on the graph you have on the book, but you are understanding the idea, okay? We relate one value of x and one value of y. If you only have one of each, so it's going to be a function. In this case, this relation is a function. It doesn't have a constant rate of change because remember it's not a straight line. We cannot find the slope because it's not a straight line. We can find the slope when you have something like this. In this kind of graph, I can find the slope when we have a straight line, it doesn't matter uh, the slope, okay? But in this, in this kind of graph, when we have a curve, we cannot find the slope. They both are functions, only that this graph is going to be something like this. I'm going to write it in here. Excuse me, I have a question. Why on, why on that kind of graph we can find uh, the slope? in this kind of graph that I'm going to show you in here. No, um, in the another one. Oh, okay. Okay, just one second. Um, the form of this is going to be a straight line, right? It's going to be a straight line. So you can find the slope because you have a constant rate of change. You have a constant change in each value. For example, in here, you can see that it changed only one, one for the other, one, and for example, in here you change four, four again, four, but in here it's not constant. So you are not going to find the slope. Remember the slope is a constant rate of change. You cannot find anything constant in here because it's not a straight line. This is why we don't have to find the slope in here, okay? That's the difference between two, between these two graphs. They are both functions, but you can only find the slope when you have something like this. Okay, is it clear now? I don't know who asked the question. Thank you. It was me, Maria Jose. Oh, okay, it's clear now, Maria? Yes, thank you. Okay. So we can finish with the example three. Compare properties of linear functions. We are only going to compare. This only takes two minutes, I think. In the first one, you have the graph, and in the other one, you have the equation. So if I compare this, the equation, remember, you have the form of the equation, y equal mx plus b. This is the form of your equation, right? And we are going to replace with the values they give you. Two times x minus three. So um, two linear functions, Represented below, we need to compare it. What is the y-intercept? This, right? Negative three is the initial value of my graph. And the slope, what is going to be the slope? The number two that is multiplying the x. So I'm going to compare it with the graph we have in the other part. 
I have something. This graph could be a, bit, a, a little different for you. It's something like this, okay? It doesn't finish completely. It's something like this, okay? And in here, I'm going to place the point of the arrow. Where is located this point? It's located in seven, for why? It's located in seven, I'm going to move this. So where it starts my graph? It starts in seven, right? Because you can see that this is going down. But I don't know the exact point of X. You can see it because you have it on the right line of your book. And what is happening in here? You don't know the important. Okay, the important, maybe I'm going to draw it in here. You can see that when you go down, I need to change the color. I need to change the color. You can see that when you go down, you are moving how many units in, in Y? One unit, right? And it's going to be negative because you are going, okay? For the negative values, it's going down. And for the X, you move two units. It looks more than two if I keep this in that way, but okay. You move two units in X and only one unit in Y. So this is going to be negative. So what is going to be the slope? The slope is only dividing Y over X. And if you have that uh, y is negative one, you divide this by the value of x. So the slope is going to be negative one over two. The constant rate of change is negative one over two. So we only compare the form of the equation in here. We don't need to do nothing else. So the function, you only compare it, you only compare for the slope. So the function a has a greater rate of change and the function B has a greater initial value. In here, you start with negative three, the initial value. In here, you, are, you have seven, so this has the greater initial value. And for the other one, the slope is two, and in here, the slope is negative one half, right? So this has the greatest slope. It's only to compare, okay? We don't need to do too much. Only seeing at the both slopes, and both initial values, we only compare it. We don't, not, we don't need to do something else. I'm going to finish in here, guys, to share the screen because I want to give you some minutes if you want to ask something about this to, make, uh, to be clear if you are uh, understanding everything. Tomorrow we finish the pages 174, 75, and 76, I give you the pages if you want to start working since today, but we are going to work tomorrow in this.